But th this book's about drawing up health family trees, basically. Uh, and this genius. is all from Lex Sicarti. It's about study yeah. genetic metabolic. This is, this Draw up your health family trees, put all the medical conditions on, and then investigate and become an expert on what illnesses are in your family there. It can save your life. But from in, in, in chapter 14 there, at the beginning, there are two pages at the beginning of chapter 14 where I list all the pathology tests that I've done in thousands of patients uh, to show you that uh, I've measured things like vitamin levels, mineral levels, uh, heavy metals uh, in hair analysis and serum to see if they've got high or toxic levels of heavy metals. I've done food sensitivities, immediate reaction of foods on the RAS test. I've done antibodies to, to grain fractions like gluten, gluten, for celiac, antibodies to milk peptides to show milk sensitivity intolerance, and extensive what they call autoimmune disease screens to measure antibodies to eight components of vessels for vasculitis or blood vessel disorders, eight components of vessels we can measure antibodies to, five components of neurological tissues we can measure antibodies to those, we can measure antibodies to cartilage for osteoarthritis and synovial membrane for synovitis. So what I've done is correlated the abnormal pathology on the autoimmune disease screen with the actual food sensitivities and been able to show that uh, for osteoarthritis you need a special diet. It's the easiest diet, is the osteoarthritis diet. It's mainly being off milk and grains and cane sugar and things like that. And you can get the cartilage antibodies and reticulin connective tissue antibodies to reverse. So you can hold osteoarthritis in check and won't need hip replacements or knee replacements, things like that. In systemic lupus, it's much more complex. You have to be on things like milk and eggs and yeast and beef and uh, as well, and legume and beans and things to, to, to reverse systemic lupus and help MS patients and, and things like that. And then the final diet is, is the strictest diet, is a synovitis diet, keeping out of a wheelchair diet. Now, this is the one we use for autistic kids, for schizophrenia. We use it for OCD, manic depressive, bipolar manic depressive illness. And we use it for serious illnesses like scleroderma and, and uh, rheumatoid arthritis and uh, cardiolipin syndrome and, and a vasculitis where people have antibodies to elastin and collagen of their vessels and things like that. Now that diet also takes out citrus and solanaceae and solicit rich food. So this gives three main diets which help seriously ill people. Now the synovitis diet can be adapted for cancer patients. So yeah. the, you have to also avoid animal fats and poultry fats, or, or, or meat and poultry. Now, the, the issue is that nobody else in the world that I'm aware of has done all these tests in cancer patients, measured vitamins and minerals and hair analysis and milk pep antibodies to milk and grain peptides. and Nobody's done this. This is orthomolecular oncology, basically. I think that there is a journal of orthomolecular oncology in our society. So nobody's done all these things. So when people present with cancer, they're not getting vitamin levels measured, they're not getting mineral levels measured, they're not getting amino acid levels measured, they're Toxin not getting levels. essential fatty mm. acid measured. They should be measuring monosaccharides, they should be measuring the eight essential glyconutrients, <coughs> the, the, the sugars there. I think this is, this is something which we need to do. And uh, the, the, uh, they're not doing these tests. So the tr standard treatment for cancer is cut it out, radiotherapy, chemotherapy, mm. but not looking at what's wrong with the system. So somebody has breast cancer in one breast, uh, have all this treatment, another year or so later we get cancer in the other breast. You haven't changed the internal milieu disturbance, what's wrong with the system, you see. So what we do is by measuring all these vitamins and minerals and hormones and, and nutrients and things, we get a pretty good idea of what's wrong with the system at the point in time people present with cancer. And the big things that would, that would cause people to present with cancer are vitamin deficiencies, mineral deficiencies, particularly antioxidant deficiencies, high levels of toxic metals, low DHEA hormone, low cortisol hormone, and disturbances of what we call first and second messenger, PG1 series and cytokine P. So we try to look in cancer for these deficiencies uh, that will boost the immune system and switch off inflammation. And we look for things that cause inflammation. See, see cancer is really chronic inflammation. You get raised prostaglandins of the E2 series, they're bad, they're nasty prostaglandins, they enhance mitosis and things. Now, also you get increased interleukin-6, which flares up cancer. Tumor necrosis factor flares up cancer. You get increased histamines that flare up cancer, and so <coughs> on. There's a whole lot of inflammatory things. You get raised C-reactive protein, and you get raised uh, ESR. There's chronic inflammations associated with cancer. How do you get rid of the chronic inflammation? You've got to get out of a diet 
the things that release all those inflammatory things. That is your diet. So one half of treatment is diet. Absolutely essential is, is the diet. And the other half of treatment is building up first and second messenger with nutrients, building up the cortisol, building up the DHEA if, if it isn't a hormone-dependent cancer. So this was working for cancer patients. So I had patients uh, with, uh, had, had uh, uh, over 10 uh, metastases in the brain from breast cancer. Uh, I got this patient in remission with diet and nutrients and three times she broke the diet and three times the cancer came back. Uh, but we got it back into remission with diet. The fourth time, because she was virtually comatose, uh, her husband having to look after her and he, he couldn't be bothered with the diet, unfortunately. So, so she, she died. We had a, a lady with a brain tumour which was inoperable, with meningioma, with sending her blind and giving her terrible headaches. And she had meninges antibodies. And we got the meninges antibodies negative. This is in 1987. And she went to 1996 before the tumour came back. With, with, uh, we've had other uh, acoustic neuroma in remission uh, with a similar approach uh, with diet and nutrients, you see. So this should be the standard treatment for cancer in the future, is to be aware that certain foods are not a good idea for cancer patients like milk and bread and grains and, okay. uh, yeah. and cheese and things like that.